Hello, my name is Doug Leisure, and today I wanted to record a video to show you how we can find and fix small issues with the data in my donation software. Sometimes we're asked to, to just simply find some information about a prior donation. Hey, did Natalie donate on a particular Sunday? Did, um, did we get any money for our special Vacation Bible School donation in February? Sometimes, however, we need to find and fix a problem. <clears throat> Maybe we, uh, we enter the donor name incorrectly. We need to find all occurrences of that uh, misspelled name and fix them. Uh, maybe we just have some inconsistencies in the name of our special. One week, um, Sally entered it, entered our Vacation Bible School special donation as Vacation Bible School. The next week, Sam entered it as the, uh, the three-letter abbreviation VBS, and we want to make it consistent. So those are some some uh, typical typical examples. Um, let's go ahead and, and uh, take a look at how we can do that. And I'm going to be showing you three specific tools with inside, with inside of Excel uh, that we would use for doing this. So let's start by opening up our, do, our master uh, donation file. Okay, so we will always start in the master. And when we get there, we will want to just simply cancel out of this, uh, out of the donation date because we're not really doing a, uh, we're not entering a donation. We're just, we're just finding and fixing some problems. Hit OK on this one. Okay, the majority of the time we will be looking at the data in our annual tab. But the the things I'm teaching you will also be a, a useful, perhaps in your donors tab, especially if you have a lot of donors. It's also tools that uh, you just generically will want to know how to use if you spend any time working in Microsoft Excel. Alright, let's go to our annual tab. And again, we're going to be looking at uh, find and replace. So on the on the home ribbon, we can find the find and replace options here. We'll also be looking at sorting and filtering, which you will find on the data ribbon, sorting and filtering. Okay, if you are just simply finding some data, we do not have to unprotect the annual tab because we're just finding something. Um, here, let's just simply search for, um, search for uh, for Natalie. So we'll do a, no, I'm sorry, let's, let's do it this way. Let's just simply search for uh, a, a donation to the music group. So we'll do the find and we will type in music and we'll click the find next. So we're not changing anything, therefore it will work while the sheet is, while this particular sheet is ta um, is protected. You can still f do a find. Find next, find next, while well, there's only one, one occurrence, so it's not finding the, any additional ones. Okay, so the find will work while, the, sh while the, the, uh, the tab or the sheet is protected. If we want to make any changes, once we find a problem, then we will have to unprotect the sheet to make those changes. So let's go to Review, Unprotect. And now, and let me just in, encourage you, be careful while you're in here, because we are making changes. Okay, so let's take a look at um, what, 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 <clears throat> what I think is a very typical problem, where we have some inconsistencies in the way we entered the names of our special. All right. Now, uh, to be fair, where I typically see this problem to know that I, I have the problem and need to fix it is when I'm looking at our reports. So at the bottom of our reports is a display of all of the specials that we've collected for the year and the names that were entered on them. And if we look down at the bottom, we see that one time it was entered as Vacation Bible School, another time 
that same special offering was entered with the name VBS. So the first thing you have to decide is which one do you want to use? Are we going to switch VBS to spelled out Vacation Bible School or the other way around? And uh, for our example, we'll go, we'll go ahead and just make everything consistently the letters VBS. Okay, to our annual tab. And what we're going to do, <clears throat> uh, again, let's make sure we're, we're clear on this. You have a find and you have a find and replace, two different options. One just finds it and then the other will actually find it and automatically replace it. Now the in the Windows world, as you put your mouse here, it'll tell you that Control F is the shortcut way to get to a find, and Control H is the shortcut way to get to the replace. This works the same in the Mac world, um, that we have the find and replace icon, the same dialog box. The difference is it does not pop up a little thing like this to say uh, control F and control H are the, the letters to use. However, those two keystrokes, control F and control H, do work on a Macintosh as well. Okay, so let's just simply go to the top of our our annual tab and we'll do a, a find. So control F and we want to find uh, vacation. Okay. Now, the nice thing about the find is we can be brief and look for a portion of the word. So if, if we just look for VAC and do the find, it'll find vacation Bible school because it began with VAC. That's kind of nice. Um, so a lot of times when you're doing a find and re a find or a find a find command, then you want to be brief. Um, fewer fewer letters is better than more. Um, now, if you do too few of of the words, like like just the letter V, then you may be finding things that you don't expect. Okay. In fact, what we'll use is an option here for find all. So it actually shows us using the find all button instead of just the find next every place where it found the occurrence of what we're searching for. In this case the letter V. Sometimes it was in a cell formula, sometimes it was in the middle of the word November. So it finds the right things but it also finds a lot of the wrong things if you're too brief. So we'll add VAC and do a find all and now we're finding the right, the right order, the right set of items. The other thing, another trick with the find and the find and replace is how we can uh, designate what, where to look. So rather than just simply looking anywhere on this sheet, we can tell it look only in the selected column. So in this case, column Y, we'll highlight it and then we'll do our, our find command. And in this case, finding just the letter V, finds VBS and Vacation Bible School. Okay. All right. So I think that's enough on the find command. Let's take a look at um, the find and replace. All right. So what we have done through the find command is we found that we do have that problem. Uh, the Vacation Bible School needs to be switched to VBS. Now we could do this manually, right? Now that we found it and we've unprotected, I can just copy this to here, 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 and here and do it manually. However, I want you to, to know, because I, th I think it's just a, a wonderful and powerful methodology of, of doing, uh, fixing things that you know are going to occur in multiple places, and that is to use the find and replace. Okay. So what, um, what we can do is use the find and replace. So I'm forcing it to column Y, find VAC and replace it with, now this isn't going to work because what we want to do is we want to find the entire 
word, or words in this case, and replace the entire thing. So just finding VAC is not sufficient. All right, so what we, what we really want to do is find this entire, uh, entire phrase, all three words with the spaces, and replace it in totality. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this, and we will do a find and replace. So we are finding the entire phrase, replacing it with a new phrase, or in this case, just these three letters. And we've already forced it to column Y only, so we can say replace all. It found four occurrences in the entire column Y and made four replacements. Just undo that here real quick. All right, so that that so so one of the things you might want to do, uh, another little trick with a find is the idea of starting with a find, okay, taking a look at everything that it finds, and then on the find dialog box, look how you have an option right here to also come over and do the replace. Okay, so using, using them, uh, starting with the find option, and then just simply using the replace portion of it uh, is, a, is a great way to do it. So we confirm that we found just the ones we, just the four items we want to replace by using the find, find all, and then going to the replace portion of this dialog box and saying that we want to now replace this phrase with this new phrase, VBS. And again, we're, we're assured of what it's going to find because we're seeing it visibly here. So we know that the replace all will do just these four cells. Okay. All right, I think that's a, a pretty good, uh, a pretty good understanding of the find, find, replace um, option for, for fixing things. Now, the, the one big thing you do need to know is we have physically made changes to the Excel file. So um, in order to save these changes, we do need to save the Excel file. Okay. Now, one of the nice things I do like about Find, Find and Replace is how it makes changes wherever the data is currently located. It does not move anything or change the order. So that's one of the wonderful things about that. It's a great tool. I think you should should learn it. It also uh, works in other uh, other Office products, um, so I, th I think it's a, it's a good thing to, to know and, and use. All right, but let's go on and take a look at at uh, another methodology with which would be using uh, the sorting tool. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just exit without saving, and my reason for doing that is just simply that I want to start over again as if we are just beginning to search for our problem. So let me just close this down. Do not save because I want to I want to open it back up again with the uh, with the problem still there. All right, so we will open up our master file again. All right, we're not doing a donation, so we'll cancel here. Okay to that dialog box. Go to our annual tab. Okay, so we're going to be using the sorting. The sorting can be found under the data, but in order to sort, it is going to physically be, be moving data around, putting it in, in different order. So we must unprotect the sheet so that Excel can make those changes, physically moving the data around. So let's go ahead and unprotect our sheet. And now we can come back to the data ribbon. All right. So in the two tools that I'm going to show you next, sorting and filtering, in both of these cases, it is important that Excel understands what is our range of data. What, what are we trying to sort? Do I want to sort just this data and leave the rest of it where, where it exists? 
Um, you can do that, but that's typically the wrong way to do it. Okay, we absolutely want to make sure that all of our data is included in the, ra in, in the highlighted range as we are sorting. Move everything, not just, not just a part of it. If I move a part of it, then these, these values are no longer associated with Dylan. They might end up being associated with incorrectly with Natalie or Eliana. So we, we want to make sure we are, we are sorting all of the data. The other thing, sometimes in your data, you might have some gaps. We might have some data here, a gap, and then some more data. If your data does not have a gap, that is, it's, it's contiguous, that's the, that's the geeky word we use for it, data, then uh, the nice thing is that Excel can figure out what your data is. So you can just click anywhere within your data and click the sort. And it will recognize uh, the collection of data. It will also recognize in row five that these are the names of our columns, uh, what they call uh, this option here, my data has headers. So these are the header uh, descriptions for each column. And therefore, those names are, are what we use. We sort by name rather than just simply by the column letter. It's a great, great thing. Okay, uh, just to emphasize, if I have holes in my data, it's not contiguous, then I will need to manually select the entire range before I click on the sort button. Okay, let's take a look at uh, using uh, using the sort. Okay, let's let's go ahead and go back to our our common um, example that we're using that we have a problem with some of the names in the specials. All right, so what we can do is we can come here, tell uh, ask Excel uh, to bring up our little sort dialog box. Yes, our data has headers, and probably the simplest thing we could do is just simply sort by the name of our specials. So right here, sort by, and we'll go down here and find the name of our special. And your option here is to sort it A to Z or Z to A. And since um, we're looking for a v v VBS or Vacation Bible School that kind of ends at the end of the end of the alphabet, we'll go ahead and just put it in reverse order. As soon as we do that, all of the data is sorted and we can see that VBS is now collected together followed by Vacation Bible School and then our other our other specials and down here is all of the um, all of the all of the, uh, the the data that did not have any specials associated with it okay so the quick and easy way to do it and then we can just simply um, copy copy this and paste it over top of there to, to fix it up and make it consistent. Okay, so that, that's one use of the sorting. Um, as I mentioned, it did change the order drastically. Okay, because it, it physically moved things around. Um, so let's take a look at a couple more examples and then we'll put the data back into a reasonable order at the, at the end and save it. Um, but let's, well actually, I'm sorry, while we're here, let's go ahead and fix this up. Uh, let's copy this and paste it over top of there. So now we have the correct, uh, we, we've made the, the change that, we, that we, we required. We fixed it up to make the data consistent. Um, just a little side note that I think is important for you to understand. Um, in the Excel world, as you are moving things around with the, with the sort option, Sometimes this will break the way you've designed your cell formulas that are using this data. Um, but uh, don't, don't fear, in my particular methodology of, of creating um, our receipts and our reports, I did it in a way that, uh, that it doesn't really care what order our data is in. As an example, um, we are in a, in a crazy different order compared to what the way our, re, our donations were entered, but if I look at my receipts for Natalie, 
it creates the receipt for year 2023 just fine, even though we just move the data all around in a totally different order. It doesn't break the receipts. In a very similar way, our report for 2023 works perfectly fine, as does our five-year report. So, so just uh, just wanted to, to give you that that uh, comforting feeling that that the way I designed my cell formulas uh, for the reports and the receipts, um, it doesn't care what you what order you put the data in. Okay, let's go back and look at a couple more things with sorting. Um, so again, we'll come here to the sort option and. One of the things I wanted to show you is how you can actually sort by more than one column. So we are sorting by, and let's take a let's take an example where we want to actually sort it first of all by the year to get all the data together in the same year, and then we want to sort by the date. So we have a year and then a date, so that within each year, everything is is being displayed in the order in which we received our donations. So we'll start start with selecting year okay so that'll put everything in order by the year now we need to add another level so that we can also sort first of all by year and then by the date okay and you can see that you can add additional additional levels here um, depending on what you're doing right you might want to go um, largest no Yep. Yes, sorry, largest to smallest. This would put it in reverse order. And then um, newest to oldest. And this just simply puts your newest data on top. Okay, so year 2023 on top in in order with the newest data on top. That, that kind of a concept. So let's do it again. And probably what is more typical is that you do it um, in the order in which which uh, you received your donations. So the year is smallest to largest, the date is oldest to newest. But that does need, mean my newest data is now at the bottom. So depending on how, on what you're, you're using this for, um, this is probably uh, the right way to leave it when you're all done. Um, let's go ahead and do another, another quick example. And um, this is where we're trying to find um, information about a particular person, Natalie. What did she donate? You know, maybe she asked you the question, hey, did I give you a donation in, in, um, in January? So let's, let's go ahead and answer that question. First thing we want to do is well, we will want to sort it by year so we can focus on just the data we care about. I'm going to go ahead and make it um, largest to smallest, so our current year is on top. And then we want to sort by donor name. And your choice, whether it's A to Z or Z to A. Okay, but now all of the 2023 data is collected together. And as we come down here, we'll see that all of Natalie's data is now is now um, next to each other. So it makes it easy to, uh, to review when she gave what she gave. Okay, so that's a great use of the sorting. Again, it has moved things around, so when it's all done, we'll want to put it back into a reasonable order and save it. Okay, so let's, uh, what is a reasonable order? Well, I'm going to suggest that the most reasonable way to, to do it uh, would be uh, in the order in which it was received. Now, you could, you could just do the date, and that would work, um, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of stay consistent with what we've been doing and do the the year first, followed then by the donation date. And, um, uh, yeah, sorry, yes, oldest to newest is the, the most common way to sort things. All right, so now we've left our data in the order in which it was received, and we would then just simply save and, and, and we'll be done. Okay, we're going to go on and take a look at one more, our, th our third tool for uh, for helping us find and fix problems with it with the data uh, in in order to do that I'm going to once again close without saving so we can come back into the Excel file uh, where it still has the uh, the problem that we need to fix 
Okay, one more time, we're going to launch uh, Excel. We're going to open our master file. We're going to cancel here because we're not doing a donation. Okay, on that little dialog box, we go to our annual tab. And the first thing we'll want to do is go ahead and unprotect it. And I'm so sorry, I forgot to say, um, right before you save this sheet, please protect it again. Protect the annual tab uh, so you don't accidentally make any any changes that you don't want to in this in this tab. So protect it again before you save it. Okay, let's take a look at the um, the sorting. Sorry, the filtering option. Again, um, oh sorry. In this case, what we're going to do, our filter is actually based on these column titles. Okay. So we want to be in the um, in this row five here, where we have our column titles. When we click the data filter, so what it's doing is it's giving us options to filter by the data in each of these columns. So to take a, a look at an example, let's take a look at the one we've been using. Uh, where we know that we have sometimes VBS and sometimes Vacation Bible School. So uh, with the filtering, you use the little down arrow right here. So it's the name of the special that where we have the problem and where we're trying to search and find the problem. So we click on the little down arrow. Okay, You can technically, with this dialog box, sort it, but I'm going to suggest that you don't want to do that. Um, Instead, we want to come down here, and what we're going to do is look at the options that are at the bottom. By default, everything is selected, so all of the different items that have been entered, as well as any blank, uh, blank cells. If you just simply unclick the Select All, now you can tell it to display only the items that we are searching for. So it's going to hide everything except where Vacation Bible School is the name of the special. Okay, um, so kind of like this, the find and replace, this does not move any data. It just simply hides data that doesn't match what we're looking for. All right, you also have the option with this to choose multiple or to select multiple things. So if we do VBS and Vacation Bible School, we see where we have it entered correctly and where it is incorrectly entered. Now these rows are not contiguous. It's not uh, row five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in a row, all right, because it just simply is displaying it where it exists, hiding the things that don't match what we've selected. But one of the nice things about, about this view is that Excel allows us to copy across these uh, across these rows even though they are not next to each other they're not contiguous that's the nice thing about the filtering is how Excel treats it as if the data is is uh, right next to each other and collected together so it's, it's actually a wonderful wonderful tool and a wonderful thing how, how Excel handles that so it's just that that quick and easy to um, to find our data and fix it. Uh, while we're here, let's just go ahead and take a look at this kind of advanced methodology of finding things rather than rather than um, selecting it down here, especially if you end up with lots and lots and lots of different choices here. Sometimes, you, well actually here you can do a search. Let's do it this way. We want to find everything that starts with the letter V, or um, things that have V A. Oops, sorry, it it automatically put the check mark there. V A C. Okay, I'm sorry, it's not quite working the way I expect it to, but you can you can use the search here when you have a long list. Um, but the other thing I wanted to show you real quick here is that we also have the option for some 
advanced uh, advanced um, searching. So with text, we can say it equals something. It does not equal something. It begins with, it ends with, it contains, does not contain. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a nice way uh, to give you some additional uh, additional finding um, or, or filtering capability. So it's just really nice. All right, let's um, yeah, to turn this off and that is return the data to, <clears throat> to its original view. We can either clear the filter or or select everything again so that it's back to where it was. Let's take a look at a couple other examples and uh, let's take a look at then how we want to um, uh, find things within a particular year and uh, and date. So on the year we'll collect we'll click on the little drop down here and let's go ahead and just choose year 2023. It's just our, our current year. All right, so now the data that's being displayed is only year 2023, and now we can come over and look at dates. So if we only want to see data in March, we get rid of the select all and choose just the month of March. And that's the only data that we're, that is being displayed. Everything else is there, but hidden. All right, and uh, taking this idea a little, little bit further, just wanted to show you if you look at, um, there's actually a little plus sign here saying that there's more than just a single month. We could even limit it down to a particular day of the month. Hey, we really just care about February 12 and 19. We want to look at those two donation weeks. Okay, so great, great little tool. Let's take a look at um, one more example, and that's where we want to actually find um, a particular person. So let's go go look at um, uh, Eliana here again. So let's um, clear this filter. We've chosen the current year, and then we would do a, um, a filter on just a particular name. So we get rid of the select all, and choose who do you want to do? Emmy? Sure, Emmy will work. So now these are all the donations by Emmy in year 2023. Okay. All right. Those are the things I wanted to show you. But I'm sorry, what we need to do um, at the end, now, now, now that we're done finding and, and fixing things, uh, we want to put we want to put everything back again as it was. We don't want to leave this collapsed like this. We need everything to be visible. So you can go here and um, eliminate these, or let me just show you a little trick. I can also come back here to the Filters button, and if I click it again, see how it's highlighted now? If I click it again, it turns off filtering. So that's just a quick and easy way to, to get rid of all of our filters returning the data so that everything is visible. And uh, as I mentioned, you will want to now protect your sheet. And save it. And close it. All right. Well, those are the things I wanted to show you, those, those three very, very helpful tools.